Okay, today I am just going to be ranking every Studio Ghibli movie I have seen from favorite to least favorite. I've seen, I've seen pretty much most of them. I've seen, I think I know more about Studio Ghibli, Ghibli than you do because I, I have seen most of the movies though. There's a couple I know I didn't see, but I have seen most of them. The moment we got HBO Max, I watched all these damn movies, let me tell you that. So I'm just gonna start, start off with my favorite because that is the easiest for me. So my favorite, I'm going to put, this is so basic, Ponyo. Because Ponyo is just the one I grew up with, so it's the nostalgic one. I remember just seeing advertisements for it as a kid. I don't know if I saw it in theaters. I think I might have, but great movie, great movie, really cute. It also like holds up, like it's a good movie. It's good, you do know that like, it's a good movie. I don't know what else to say, a cult classic. I also, you know what, and the thing I'm gonna say about this one is that it's good both dub and sub. The, d the dub is great, it has Noah Cyrus singing that little Ponyo song. Equally good dub and sub, okay. Second favorite also has an equally good dub and sub and that is Howl's Moving Castle. If Ponyo wasn't nostalgic, Howl's Moving Castle would be number one, but I didn't see Howl's Moving Castle until like two years ago. I did not know about it. I really didn't. It is just so good. It is so good. I don't even know. It's like a found family kind of movie, okay? It's... Man, I'm like, I'm speechless actually about this movie. I just think Howl is just like chef's kiss. Like that, that is the character. That is the male character we want. That, yes. Like the... <sighs> like really like howl is just like the ideal you know and then sophie's also like queen like yes you guys are perfect for each other and i also like the whole movie is like a time loop which is like freaky when you realize it at the end it's so weird but yeah it's just it's just so fun it's a good fun movie i again really does hold up 10 out of 10. And it's also like something a little different, I feel like, because it's like set in another universe. You know, it's just, I feel like a lot of Studio Ghibli movies take place in like the modern, not the modern age necessarily, but like Earth. But this one's like a little different. This one's like maybe medieval Earth, but I mean, it's not, it's like, it's like a magical era. You know what I'm saying? Number three, number three, number three. Okay, let me think. Number three, I would put Whisper of the Heart. I feel like, I don't know if a lot of people have that one this high, but I, I really love this movie. I feel like this movie is like kind of the opposite of Howl's Moving Castle. It is like, it, it is literally just like the real world. It's like a girl almost like dreaming about Howl's Moving Castle. Do you know what I'm saying? It kind of is like the polar opposite in the sense that it's like not magical and mystical, but that's what makes it so good. And it's just like, it's a, it's so good. And it actually has a like good meaning to it. Not that like Studio Ghibli movies don't, like they all do, but it's just so, it's, it's a good one. It's a cute one. I really like that one. And it's like a little love story, but that's like not necessarily, I, I guess it's like a focal plot point, but it's not, how to explain? It's like not the only thing this movie's about. Like it's more about like her trying to be like an author, her like, you know, great movie, great movie. I would say the main character is very relatable. Number four, I would put, okay. I would put Kiki's deliveries. No, no, this one actually, okay, shit. I'm like, what one do I pick? I think number four, okay. I think number four, I'll have to put Kiki's Delivery Service. Now, the reason I was hesitant to put this as four is because Totoro could also be four, but going off my stats, I just think Kiki's Delivery Service way more. So it would only make sense for it to be in four. And again, this one is just like cute. Like it has a cat. It has a black cat. Okay, there's kittens at the end. Like. Again, this one is kind of like similar to Whisper of the Heart. It's like young girl finds herself, you know, but it's fun because she's like a witch. So this one actually has some magic, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a little fun. Again, aged amazing. This movie's from 1989. Like, that's insane. Um, So then yeah, five, I would put My Neighbor Totoro. That's 1988. Like, this one is just like, it's sad, but it doesn't like, you know when some movies just pull your heartstrings, they want to make you cry. That's the whole point of it. This one isn't. It's like, I feel like it's more realistic in that sense. Like, their mother is ill, but it's not like their mother just like dies in it. Like, it shows like, 
a lot of times people get ill and they don't die. So it kind of like shows that like path and like, you know, they move to, it's like, it's so cute. Like they go in the little forest, they find like Totoro and all the little forest creatures. Like, yes, yes. And then just the cat bus, like so many iconic, I would just say so many iconic visuals from this movie. Okay, so many, like cultural impact of this movie, insane. Okay, so that would be five, six. Okay. 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 Six. I'm going to be putting Spirited Away. I feel like that might be low. This movie's really good. This movie is really good. But it's just, just I mean, it's just kind of forgettable. Like, I actually did almost forget about it. Like, no, th like, trust, trust. This is a really good movie. But yeah, it's just kind of forgettable for me because I've only seen it a couple times. And it's also just like, I just prefer the other ones. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's good. I feel bad putting it at six. Six is still good, but... I I feel like a lot of people might have this one as number one. This one I think might have won an Oscar, but again, this one to me is just a little more forgettable. If I saw this as a kid, it would scare the crap out of me because freaking her family, her parents turning into pigs, like no, 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 no. So then seven, I would probably put, I would put Grave of the Fireflies because that one is meant to make you cry that movie as it should because it, the plot is so sad. I did not, like people, I knew it was gonna be a sad movie when I put it on, but me and my family watched it and we were bawling our eyes out. It is literally that sad. Like if you need to cry, watch that movie and you will cry, guaranteed. Again, from 1988, still holds up. I think this movie's coming up in theaters soon, you know, in the Studio Ghibli Fest. I could be wrong, but I would love to see this in theaters because when I watched it, I watched it at home. But it, it's so sad. It's, oh my God, it's so sad. So that would be, did I put that as seven? Yes. For number eight, I am going to put, I think I'm gonna put, shit, this one's kinda hard. I, hmm, this one's kinda hard. I think I'm gonna put Porco Rosso. I know what you're thinking, what? But like this movie, like that's what I thought. Before watching it, I was like not expecting a lot. It's actually like a really good movie, like a really good movie. Also, like it has Nami's voice, voice actress in it, and she she just slays it. She really just slays it. But like I feel like this movie is unex like it, I don't I don't hear a lot of chit chat about this movie. But it's so funny. It's so funny. It's a good it's a good movie. I yeah no, it's a really good movie. I need to watch it again. I want to watch it again. That's a good one. Under that nine, I. I would actually put The Cat Returns. So random. I saw this in theaters when it was at Studio Ghibli Fest like a year ago. It's just cute. It's just fun. And I, I, I like cats. Like, I think this one honestly is just there because I like cats. But... I do really like cats, so there you go. Under that, I would probably put the Tales of Princess Kaguya, Kaguya in that one. This movie, I like didn't get through the whole thing. I think like I missed parts, but I love the art style. I love the plot. Very good when I saw it. Um, I don't know what I was doing, why I missed it. I think I was like busy because we played it at home. But the reason this one is here is because the next movies that I list, I just don't love. Like, this is a good movie. Objectively, it's a good movie. And the other, I guess the other ones are too, but I'll explain why the other ones I name are lower, and you'll see. So under the Tales of Princess Kaguya would be Princess Mononoke. This movie, listen, I know people are gonna be shocked it's this low. This movie has a great message. It, it is like kind of, it's a tearjerker-ish if you feel for animals and and relate it to the real world. <clears throat> it's just sad. It, it just, it's just sad. It reminds you about like human, human man-made doom, like, <laughs> Like, humans cause their own demise, you know? And they cause, the you know, nature's demise. The reason why it's this low, though, is because it's kind of boring. It's long. It's a long movie. It's two hours and 14 minutes. That's long for a Studio Ghibli movie. So it is a long movie. Again, not saying, like, it's bad, but it's just long, and it does not need to be that long. It does not. So for that reason, for that, for that reason, I'm out. For that reason, it's right there. Under that, I would put... <sighs> I would rather put The Secret World of Arietti. I think I only saw this in dub. Bridget Mendler. We love, we stan. This one is just kind of like, for me, a forgettable movie. It's not bad. It's a creative movie, but just forgettable. It was like, okay. It was okay. Like, 
it, it was just okay. Under that, I would probably put, because now we're getting into the, mold, the ones I don't really love. You know what? Like, I don't even know how to rank these because I really don't like these ones that much. I guess I would put From Up on Poppy Hill next. But again, this one to me is just forgettable. Art style, great, but just forgettable. Under that, I would put The Wind Rises. For me, this one's just kind of boring. Okay, interesting historical movie, but kind of boring. Under that, I would put, I think, Castle in the Sky. I think I started watching it, but stopped because I was just disinterested. Even though this one's pretty popular, but I just was like, no. I did, now let me, I'm gonna exclude two movie, a couple movies, movies from this list because I didn't see them. Oh my God, and I totally forgot about the new one. The new movie, I don't even wanna include in this ranking because I only saw it once. The new movie would probably be like under Spirited Away or as Spirited Away. But in this, I'm gonna not include Ocean Waves because I didn't see Ocean Waves. I didn't see My Neighbors, the Yama Yamadas. I did not see, I did not see Only Yesterday. I did not see Palm Poco. I did not see When Marnie Was There. I don't know if I saw Nar Nausicaa Valley of the Wind. I don't know if I did. I might have though. But I know there's, that's like quite a few movies I haven't seen, but like they're, they're not as popular as Studio Ghibli ones, but let me just say the, the the one that I know is going last because I actually despise this Studio Ghibli movie. Like who would have thought? Tales of Earthsea is so bad. It's so bad. Like it's really it's really bad. Like it's not a good movie. It's it you all these other, I'm literally looking on my phone right now. All these other Studio Ghibli movies have green scores. Like literally such good reviews. This. This is the only movie with under 50. Like, all of these ratings on Metascore are like 70 and above. This one is 47. Okay, that's how you know this movie was not good. Reason being, I remember watching this with my sister. It is so confusing. It is so confusing. Too much going on, like, in the plot. Like, I just remember, like, we, we looked up what was going on after, and we were like what was the point of this movie it's not good i could look at the reviews right now because it, this movie is so not good it's really not like i'm so sorry <laughs> Featured review. Confusing and doesn't make sense if you haven't read the books. That's the thing. It was so confusing. It was, it did not make sense. I'm very passionate about not liking this movie. It's not good. It's really not. The people writing it well, I'm like, did we watch the same movie? Um, I did not read the books. So I'm sure that, I'm sure the books are great. I'm literally just talking about the movie. The, that being said, the movie's terrible. Confusing to the extreme. Who are these people? What are they doing? Why? Like... Also, apparently they got the plot wrong from the books. Yeah, this movie was so bad. Yeah, visually, it's it's fine. Like, I don't have an issue with the visuals, but come on, I wanna see more like bad reviews. Like, people are just being too nice. There's literally a Reddit thread. Why all the hate for this? I don't even wanna like think about this movie anymore because it's just not good. Like, don't watch this movie. Don't watch it. Like, any other movie, I would say, you know what? Just see it. See if you like it. Do not even see if, do, you're not gonna, no. It's not good. It's not good. Like, it's bad. I can't even remember if we made it to the end of the movie. I wanna say we did to know what happens, but also it's very possible that we just like gave up 75% of the way through when watching it. So yeah, I know I'm kind of a flop because I didn't see some like other movies, but I do want to see Only Yesterday and Ocean Waves. Those are like the next two I want to see. I think they're supposed to be pretty good. And about the new movie, The Boy and the Heron, I liked it, but I feel that my viewing experience was impeded by the fact that I was in my... <sighs> Freaking, I was in Regal. I hate going to Regal theaters because the seats suck, but these people's like in front of me were like so tall that they were blocking the screen. And I was like, what the hell? Like, what the hell? But yeah, th it was it was good. It was cute. It, you know, I had a, a star-studded cast too. That Those are my thoughts. Those, that's it. Just don't watch Tales of Earthsea if you learned one thing from this video. Okay, and go watch Panyo.